car crashes, defective products, dangerous drugs, injuries, and abuse. Across the state of Alabama, the attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. Your tough legal questions answered by our experts with the attorneys of Hollis Wright. From emotional strain to complex legal issues and financial pressures to the impact on children and stigma and society pressure, there is a lot to deal with when it comes to divorce. Hello and welcome to the attorneys. I'm Art Franklin. That right there is John Spade, an attorney with Hollis Wright and Clay. And our special guest is also Caleb Faulkner. Glad to have you with us, Caleb. And, and, and John, we've got a lot to unpack when it comes to divorce. We do, we do. And I'm glad that we've got Caleb on today. He's obviously an expert in this you know, area, handles it every single day and helps uh, uh, individuals that are going through divorce that, that might get served with a, a divorce summons or decree or, or notified for the first time in the mail that, hey, you know, my spouse doesn't want to be with me anywhere. He's there kind of every step of the way. Um, it's a highly emotional, uh, you know, time of their lives. And I'm just very, you know, thankful to have Caleb on. Uh, Caleb, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. And tell us, tell us a little bit about kind of your daily life. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and to speak on this. Divorce is hard, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of people go through it at some point and are affected by it. As Art said, uh, children are affected by it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, they're an unwilling participant in mm -hmm. the process. And so I handle cases, family and divorce cases, day in and day out. And uh, the opportunity to help clients through what's often one of the most difficult times in their lives uh, that are just, when your marriage uh, is headed to divorce, it upends everything. You know, nobody plans on divorce when you get married. And so the opportunity to help people through that time is what I do on a daily basis. So if you've got a client that comes to you, comes to your office, maybe through a phone call or shows up at your office and says, hey, you know, I'm thinking about getting a divorce or my, my spouse has told me that they're thinking about, mm -hmm. you know, filing for a divorce. What, take, take us through kind of what are some of the things you might tell that client in, in that time, that very emotional time, um, and kind of lead us through that. Well, first off, particularly with a client who's thinking that it may be divorce time and thinking about filing, uh, first, help them understand the gravity of what they are about to do and make them you know, really, really make sure that's what they want to do. Uh, I, I certainly love when clients decide not to pursue the divorce process, when they examine things, reconcile, and move on that way. There's no one cheering on that more than me. But, you know, first and foremost, just make sure that's really where you're at. And then how do we need to move forward to protect your best interest, to protect the best interest of your children, to protect assets, and make sure that we're covering our bases in the way that we move forward. That's a pretty tough time when you get to that point where it's like we've tried, we've tried, we've tried, we went through counseling, that didn't work, we prayed on it, and then you get to the point where you say divorce is, is the final answer. So. How do you choose a lawyer in that case? Because there's so many lawyers out there, and I know this is the area that you specialize in. Absolutely. So first and foremost, I think what other people have to say about a lawyer speaks more than anything else. Uh, you know, you can, anyone can have a nice website. Anyone can, you know, package their self and market themselves in a very flashy, attractive way. But when it comes down to, okay, what are people saying about this lawyer? What, what did my cousin who went through a divorce last year, who did they use and what was their experience? And so, you know, I know personally when I'm looking for something or somebody, I go to people that I trust and I see what they're saying about particular people. So first and foremost, when you are looking at a divorce lawyer, it needs to be someone you trust and you have a good relationship with and that you can see being a good guide to guide you through the process. Uh, you know, personalities play a big part in it. Who, who do you feel trusted and comfortable with, and that's who you need to move forward with. 
would you recommend you know somebody who's trying to, to, to make that decision and I agree it's a very difficult decision to make um, you want to try to get as much information as you can be it online word of mouth mm -hmm. you know recommendations from friends family um, or potentially other attorneys but in making that decision would you recommend somebody you know going in and setting up an appointment and maybe going in a meeting in person and 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 if that's the case mm -hmm. is there anything they should be bringing with them when they go to have that kind of first initial consultation with a lawyer absolutely so i think it's paramount to invest the time and oftentimes money in a consultation in the in meeting with someone and seeing okay how do I mesh with this person? What do I think about what they're saying? How would this relationship proceed? Often attorneys, including myself, do charge a consultation fee. But if you invest that time, invest that money, it's going to pay off to make sure that you know what you're getting into. And in essence, I think clients need to be interviewing an attorney. When, when they go in for a consultation and they're asking about their case, they need to be seeing what they think of the attorney and of the process and how comfortable they are. As far as what to bring, bring a working knowledge of the finances, of the debts, of the issues. You don't have to have statements on, on day one, but know what's there and what's not to the best that you can. And oftentimes there's at least obviously one spouse who may not may not really be in the knowledge when it comes to the assets, and that's okay. But to the best that you can, come with that knowledge. If you've been served with any documents, if you received a complaint, bring that. If there's anything that's been filed, and certainly there's more, more of that type thing when someone is changing lawyers. And if someone is, has terminated a relationship with a previous attorney and is coming to find a new attorney, that attorney needs to see what has gone on in the case to that point. Are there any trends that you're, you're noticing, Caleb, when you're doing this now? I mean, we saw things change between 2019 and 2020. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in terms of divorces here in Alabama and nationwide? We are seeing, a lot of people talk about the term gray divorce. We're seeing older couples get divorced. We're seeing longer term marriages than perhaps in the past that are ending by divorce. On the other hand, uh, while the divorce rate is technically decreasing, so is the marriage rate. So you've got less people getting divorced, but you've got less people getting married in the first place. And with that, looking over the past 10 or 20 years, you're having a lot more, which we deal with as well, you're having a lot more births outside of marriage. You're having a lot of those legal and paternity issues that are going on outside of the the traditional marriage and i assume there's custody issues with that as well Absolutely. inside or outside of marriage um, obviously in the more traditional sense but also when they um, when those uh, babies are born out of, out of wedlock um, you you mentioned the term gray divorce um, what do you let, let, actually let's let's touch upon that i think after yeah. that, i think it's about time for a commercial break. yeah we'll, we'll put a pin right there and that's one of the things we'll talk about when we come back as we're talking um, divorce here on the attorneys. We also want to remind you that right now you can get in contact with an attorney from Hollis Wright. All you have to do is call 1-844-LAW-TALK. That call is free. That call is confidential. No one has to know what you're talking about, but someone is waiting to hear from you. Make sure you call the right number because there are a lot of numbers out there, but that's the right number. Divorce is the topic that we're talking about. You've heard it before, but never like you're hearing it now on The Attorneys. Stay with us. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this. I'm Josh Wright with the law firm of Hollis Wright, a personal injury law firm, and thank you for watching The Attorneys. We hope you, a friend, or a loved one never needs legal counsel for a case. But if you do, the goal of the show is simple, to provide answers and legal counsel when you need it the most. Your call to the show is free and off air. So if you have questions specific to the show or related to other accident or injury topics, call, email, or text us. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, or go to hollis-right.com and click on the Contact Us button. 
We know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it with us and watching The Attorney. Attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. When we started the show eight years ago, my hope was we would be able to do what we do best, which is to help people answer real-world legal-related issues they have in their life. People oftentimes are confronting various legal issues and problems in their lives that range across the gamut of legal practice areas, bankruptcy, criminal law, family law, just to name a few. And to be able to have a 30-minute platform or format to where we can just cover various legal topics once a week uh, that's obviously the primary focus of the show. That we would be able to use the resources of the many lawyers we have at this law firm to create a plan that had a lasting impact that also gave back to the community at the same time. And I think we've done just that with the attorneys. Did you know when you hire Hollis Wright, you are still in charge of your case? Our attorneys at Hollis Wright are client-centered, allowing you to help us control your case and result. At Hollis Wright, your result matters. I want to welcome you back to the attorneys. From time to time, you may see some information on your screen. We try to make sure we make you aware and educate you about various things. In this case, we're talking divorce as we come back from, from break. And, and John, as we were heading to break, you kind of teed it up for us for this, this next segment that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I, I just, uh, a term that I had not heard before, um, a, a gray divorce. Can you kind of explain what, what that is and, and are you seeing any of those um, in your practice? So gray divorce is a term that a lot of people use to refer to the trend of retirees, more elderly uh, among our population that are getting divorced. A lot of times it may be a 40, 50 year marriage that unfortunately is ending in divorce. And for whatever reason, that is something that seems to have become more prevalent in the past few years. Okay, so we've got uh, a divorce is happening. Client has, has come to your office for an initial consultation. Um, it, it's you know something that, that unfortunately is is moving forward. I, I expect the question that most often comes up is who gets what? How is this divided? If it is a great divorce, if it is 30 or 40, 50 years uh, of a marriage that that is now ending in a divorce, there's going to be a lot of of assets and property that that's been accumulated over that time. Um, you know, explain to us how, how does the court play into that um, and how do you kind of advise clients on who gets what of the marital property? So the way I explain it to clients is from the day you got married, you and your spouse have been accumulating property. And, you know, typically both parties brought something into the marriage as well. But starting day one, you're accumulating marital property, you're accumulating property together and if it's time for divorce we've got to figure out you know in this quote marital pie what are we going to do with what is in that pie with what we call marital property typically marital property are property items that have accumulated during the marriage it can also include property that was um, accumulated before the marriage that has regularly been used for the common benefit of the marriage by the parties and again typically excluded while there are exceptions but typically excluded with marital property is anything received by gift or inheritance during the marriage but at the end of the day we're talking about divorce now and we're figuring out okay how do we divide these property items Alabama is what we call an equitable property state which means it's not equal and it really doesn't matter what a property is titled in or whose name it's pr titled in. We're more concerned about what's equitable, what, what is fair in light of the circumstances. And a court can consider a myriad of factors including fault, including access to uh, resources moving forward, you know, who is in a better position to build assets back up than the other, age, health, um, education, any of those aspects can be used to consider 
okay, how, what needs to be the outcome here? You mentioned something there I, I would love for you, Caleb, to elaborate on as you were going through, the, through that myriad of things. You said fault. Absolutely. You know, when you start getting to a, a divorce and, and pointing fingers as your fault, is my fault, is his fault, her fault, how does that factor in when you, when you get to the point of divorce? That's a great question, Art. So first off, Alabama years ago became a no-fault divorce state, which means that a plaintiff can file for divorce and not have to prove that the defendant did anything to cause it. Basically, the plaintiff in a no-fault divorce has, with those causes of action, merely has to allege that things aren't working out and they don't want to be married. Is that the, the you hear the term thrown around irreconcilable differences? Is that yes. kind of that no fault? It is. It's not that you did anything wrong, I did anything wrong. It's just not working out. I think we need to go our separate ways. Let's yes. call a timeout and, and, and reassess this thing. Is that, is that fair? It is. It is. There's two no fault causes of action in Alabama. That is one of them irreconcilable okay. differences and incompatibility of temperament. And again, the plaintiff really just has to allege that things aren't working out, I don't want to be married anymore, and we need a divorce. Is that just making it easier to get a divorce now? It is, and again, this happened probably around 50 years ago, oh. so it, it's not a new thing, but previously there were only fault grounds, and with fault grounds, there's several of them, and let's take, for example, adultery. Well, if the plaintiff filed for divorce on the fault ground of adultery, the plaintiff would have to prove that adultery happened. And if they were a unable to meet that burden of proof, then the end result was they didn't get a divorce. So you'd have to stay with your, with your spouse even though you just made all these legal accusations that they were committing adultery. That, that's got to create for a, a less litigious process having the no-fault. Um, if you have a no-fault divorce, um, are you still having to go through the entire legal process and go before a judge and get everything approved even though we both might come to terms that this isn't working out for both parties? Yes, and a court can certainly still take into account all manner of fault even though you're pursuing a divorce on the grounds of no fault. So let's say adultery has allegedly occurred. You can file under a no-fault ground and still make all the allegations of adultery that a court can still take into consideration in its judgment. But the indifference is what does the plaintiff have to prove to obtain the divorce? Okay. And so, and those, those factors, those outside factors can factor into as well the judge's decision when they're dividing up these marital assets as far as who gets what and, and, and all of that, the breakdown. Absolutely. It can factor into alimony. It can factor in certain s situations into child custody and the outcome there. All right. We'll, we'll take a break here, another break here. Still got a lot to talk about when it comes to divorce. So, Caleb, stay right there. And you stay right where you are as well. But we also want to invite you to follow us on all of the social media channels, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. You can follow Hollis Wright and Clay there. You can get information anytime you need it. Post a lot of stuff there that may be very interesting to you. We'll take a break. We're talking divorce and we'll be right back on The Attorneys after this. I'm attorney John Spay with the Hollis Wright Law Firm. If you have ever had a personal injury claim, the attorney handling your case has likely told you that a portion of your settlement would have to be used to pay back your health insurance company for the medical bills that they paid relating to your injuries. This is called subrogation. In this week's Legal 411, we are answering the question, what is subrogation and how does it affect your personal injury claim? When you purchase health insurance, you sign a contract with the health insurance company, which provides that in exchange for you paying a monthly premium, the insurance company will pay your medical bills when you're injured. Now that contract has a paragraph that gives your health insurance company the right to seek repayment for the medical bills they paid if you in turn use those medical bills as a basis to recover from a third party that caused your injury. The idea is that your health insurance company 
would not have had to pay your medical bills if it weren't for the wrongdoing of the third party. Now, health insurance companies routinely put attorneys on notice of their subrogation claims by outlining exactly which medical payments the health insurance company is claiming a subrogation claim for and for what amounts. Throughout the handling of your case, your attorney should be aware of the amount of subrogation your health insurance company is claiming and whether all the claim subrogation is related to your underlying personal injury case. That way, if your case resolves, your attorney can then negotiate a reduction of the health insurance company's subrogation claim. Subrogation is one of the many moving parts that can affect your personal injury settlement and what you stand to recover. Please remember, your call, email, or text to the attorneys is free. All of us at Hollis Wright want to help answer your questions on real issues you face. And remember, a confident lawyer will respond to every question you send in. That's our pledge and our promise to you. Thanks for watching the attorneys. You see us each Sunday night on The Attorneys, but remember, our attorneys are here all week long to help you with your personal injury claim. Our attorneys are standing by right now to give you a free consultation at Hollis Wright. Your result matters. Welcome back to the attorneys as we continue to talk about divorce and I want to give you one of the statistics here according to the 2019 Alabama vital statistics approximately 7.59 percent of Alabamians who were married in 2019 were either above the age of 75 or under the age of 20 you might have heard the term gray divorces here um, if you if you didn't we can tell you a little bit more about that but we're talking with Kayla Faulkner of John Spay from Hollis Wright and Clay of course leading the discussion and we said we wanted to get into some other areas that we hadn't talked about alimony yeah, alimony you brought up, I think, right before the break, child custody and alimony after you get through the, the assets of the estate. Um, there might be children. Um, there might be some alimony. That's, that's, so briefly kind of explain what alimony is. I think sometimes it kind of can get conflated with, with custody, and mm -hmm. um, they're actually two separate things. So, so tell us exactly what alimony is and how that can affect a divorce. So financially speaking, the three kind of different parts in a divorce is alimony, property division, and child support. Okay. Property division, as we talked about earlier, divides the property that the parties have accumulated during the divorce. Alimony is the more support aspect, the maintenance, the income that the parties had during the marriage. Typically, you're talking about a party who's making less money than the other, maybe requesting alimony to attempt to the best that uh, the parties in the court can fashion in a way that both parties can keep the standard of living that they've enjoyed during the marriage. Obviously, you take one household, break it up into two. That's not entirely possible. Mm -hmm. But as far as trying to maintain that standard of living, it's replacing that maintenance and support that that party enjoyed during the marriage. Before so, you get into those other two, if I could jump yeah, in go John, ahead. right now, you're talking about those assets. And before I get into a, div a, a divorce or even into a marriage, how do I make sure that I protect what I already have? I'm saying, look, I want this. Is that a prenup? Or are we talking those type of deals? It is uh, one way to do that and is a prenuptial agreement, also known as an antinuptial agreement, or for short, prenup. So that is something that parties can enter into prior to a marriage that addresses the outcome of assets in either death or divorce, and it can also address the issue of alimony in a divorce. It cannot address the issues of child support or child custody in the event of a divorce. And does that apply, the prenup would apply to any assets that, that you might get during the divorce as well? It, it certainly can. Uh, prenuptial agreements are highly customizable, but yes, they certainly can address things that continue to be accumulated. What is the outcome there? Okay, um, but one thing it can address is custody and child custody. Um, we haven't really touched upon that yet in the show. Um, tell us, kind of explain 
child custody kind of in a nutshell and the, the different types of custody and how that comes about with a court intervention. Absolutely. So you have two types of child custody. You have legal custody and physical custody. Legal custody is decision making of a child. All of the decisions throughout a child's life that must be made, that's your legal custody. Physical custody is who actually has the child or the children in his or her possession, care, and control. Who is actually taking care of them day to day and they're sleeping under that parent's roof. Okay. Um, now, if you get a custody order in place, um, can that ever be revisited or is it one time and, and done and, and that's that's the custody you might get weekends or, or one week a month or whatever it is and that's what you get for the for the rest of the time it certainly can be modified and it would be modified by a subsequent legal proceeding petition to modify the previous judgment and depending on the initial award of custody that's going to determine the legal burden that the parent trying to change it is going to have to prove to change that custody order. So we've gone through this horrible process now. We're into divorce. Judge has decided what the assets are. We didn't have a prenup in place. My kids are going to a place and that I don't want them to be at. Judge has made all these decisions. I am totally unhappy with what the judge has said and what the judge has decided. Do I have any recourse or what can I do? Absolutely, so a party has a right to appeal the judgment to the Alabama Court of Civil Appeals and must do so within the time limit prescribed by law. So, you know, if you have a divorce judgment that you're not happy with, you need to see someone and you need to address it. That's good to know, because like when people are trying to go through this process, um, they're trying to decide what's next. So what's the big takeaway from this whole idea of divorce. If you can give our audience one thing that they can walk away from this show knowing that it made a difference in their decision or non-decision, um, what's the big takeaway? Absolutely, so if it's time for divorce, and I sincerely hope it's not, but if it is, uh, the biggest thing to recognize is the emotional strain, the, the stress, the things that are going through your mind it is more important than ever that you have someone guiding you through this process because you are not able and in any of us going through this situation would simply not be able to process things and figure out objectively what the best course of action is. And that's the role of a, an attorney who can walk you through this process is not only the knowledge of the law, the knowledge of the process, but the ability to be objective throughout it and see the long run of the best interests of the party. Very good. Caleb Faulkner, so glad to have you with us. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, that's Caleb. That's John Spade, Art Franklin here, thanking you for joining us here on The Attorneys. And make sure you join us for another edition next week right here at St. Place. Thanks for watching The Attorneys, sponsored by Hollis Wright.